You're watching World Insight with me, Tian Wei. Still to come on our program. Science leads the way. We visit a lab in Beijing that has been at the forefront of COVID-19 battle, with scientists coming from all over the world joining it. Whether it is testing vaccines or genetics, they are leaving no stone unturned in the hunt for a COVID-19 cure. Welcome back. You're watching World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. The COVID-19 pandemic is the biggest challenge facing the worldwide science community. Researchers are working around the clock for a diagnosis, treatments, and vaccines, not to mention a thorough investigation into the virus. What about the Chinese scientists? How are they contributing to that effort? How far, in their views, are we from the light at the end of the tunnel? With these questions in mind, I visited the Global Health Drug Discovery Institute in Beijing, which is at the forefront of this area. Ding Sheng is the director of the institute. He introduced me to the scientists and their research to fight the virus. Let's take a look. <laughs> Uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Bai from our school. Dr. Bai, <laughs> good to see you. I should say this, right? <laughs> so what does he do? Yeah, Dr. Bai actually has been uh, developing a portable uh, mobile uh, nuclear acid detecting uh, diagnostic actually uh, system. That's a long name. <laughs> uh, it's basically this is the one? Uh, this is the one. It's basically a portable uh, uh, nuclear acid detection uh, diagnostic uh, kit. Uh, how does that work? Uh, we call it um, BINUS. A box for instant nuclear acid screening. Okay. Uh, so it's very easy uh, to operate, and you can see it's a, a hand operated devices. Mm -hmm. So we have this here as the import for the sample input. Yes. So we have the sample like this. You you can put inside, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it, it can be the clinic or the clinic sample. And uh, uh, after that, we have the Import close. Put it back, yeah. And, yeah, and later on we just use the, our thumb to operate. Uh, wh what does this mean? What is inside here? What is inside here? Why uh, this process is extremely important? Oh, uh, because uh, inside this box we have uh, a chemistry called isothermal amplification. We invent a nasty isothermal amplification to achieve a large quantity uh, or very very high sensitivity of amplification and the detection. So how to operate? Yeah, yeah. After, after loading the sample. Right, after loading the sample, there's two amplification processes. In, uh, we, we have to push this first. What is this application process? Oh, this is to introduce all the sample inside the microfluid channel mm -hmm. to start the first amplification. Mm -hmm. And then we wait for 10 minutes to, to let the first amplification to finish. Mm -hmm. And then we, we push it down. That's a, that's a dilution process. And, uh, and another push. So that's the, to start uh, the second amplification. I see. And after 10 minutes of uh, waiting, we push it all the way down to have uh, the, uh, the, the, the result read out. Uh -huh. the, the on the side? Yes, the result will be read out on the side because there will be a gold color fluid to uh, laminar fluid to, to show out if there's a uh, like positive result. Okay, what is right. the color? It's red color. Red color. So if that's the positive? Right, right. If you have the red color show out, that's going to be a positive. Ah, mm -hmm. what's the negative? Negative, um, uh, there's actually no red color band on the, on the specific position. I see. So we also have the control. Mm -hmm. Ah, to, so to how long altogether? 30 minutes? Yeah, you can get it down actually in 25 minutes or 30 mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. fascinating. I mean, I would say the, the biggest advantage of this uh, small device is really you don't really need any, uh, you know, instrument actually to do nuclear acid mm. uh, detection. Uh, uh, actually, for any other actually uh, uh, diagnostic for COVID-19 product, all require for nuclear acid detection, all require a specific. Right. Uh, that's not actually convenient. And so I was thinking, you know, for many people lining outside the hospital, right. trying to get their PCR test, yeah. this is going to be a huge help, right? Yeah, yeah. And, but the one problem, you know, accuracy mm -hmm. is the biggest issue. Mm -hmm. What about the accuracy rate so oh, far? We, we test some standard sample. The accuracy is as good as the qPCR we mm -hmm. have right now. 
-hmm. So we think it's it's safe uh, uh, to tell if this uh, people, uh, this person actually being uh, infected. Positive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned that earlier you invented the acid itself, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to make the wheel? Because there are many others who already produced the acid for the tests. Mm -hmm. Because this specific aim, a specific uh, application environment, requires like a no like specific uh, machine and to, to support. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, and I think all the uh, all the uh, current assay on the market, they still need like a PCR copy qPCR assay. All all you probably need some uh, like a, a sample pre treatment machine like uh, sample preparation uh, sample and also preparation. instrument actually right, right. to do nuclear acid yeah. detection so, so this is uh, perhaps the only device actually doesn't require any instrument and sample preparation yeah. so convenient from the from clinic the sample to the answer wow so that's really impressive right we integrate everything inside this mm -hmm. box why is this going to be available? There will be people asking that question, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, because this is actually a new technology, right. and we are currently working very hard to produce in large quantity. Yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot of technical detail to, to make a manufacturing. From now till it is in my hand, meaning in the hands of the consumers, how long can we expect this process to be? Uh, we hope to get it done in two or three months. Also, this is uh, currently under review by the regulatory agency uh, to really get this approved for, uh, for personal use. Mm, I'm sure they ask you a lot of different questions regarding that. Right. Like what? Um, like the, uh, the convenience of the safety to be used in the open environment yeah. and mm -hmm. across contamination. Right. All these questions are very, very important to uh, the, the problem to be solved. Right. If we really want to get this one uh, to, to, to work at mm -hmm. home, or in the airport mm. and by the, uh, the patient themselves. Right. You know, uh, I heard about the contamination of test kits mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. some countries, and mm -hmm. that has been a huge problem. How can we, you know, devices like this and many others, avoid that phenomenon? Oh, that's a good point. Um, the contamination, actually, if you do it by yourself, there's no such thing, okay, your sample will contaminate other, sam other people. Because uh, in, in our case, you directly input the sample taken from your mouth inside this mm -hmm. box. And mm -hmm. this box, after that, this box is a fully sealed system. I see. Unless you, you try mm -hmm. to break it. like mm -hmm. uh, For this, actually, the contamination, perhaps, it's not an uh, issue because this is actually one-time use. Exactly. Right. So it's not an instrument, actually. You, you have so many, actually. Right, right. Process. So, yeah, process. so there, there yeah. won't be the uh, consideration of cross-contamination. Mm. That's a great point. And another thing is, uh, how much do you think this would reduce the costs of the overall operation mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. acid uh, tests uh, all over the country? Now I know Beijing alone, mm -hmm. uh, since the spike in mm -hmm. uh, Beijing, uh, 700,000 people yeah. being tested every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. That's a huge number, and it's still growing because yeah. everybody needs now a PCR test yeah, result, certificate. right? A certificate, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. how much? cost reduction do you think this could be? Um, I, I think uh, compared to PCR, uh, at least for the consumable, this will be a little bit more expensive mm. because you see it's a fully integrated system mm -hmm. and uh, PCR itself is just a tube and uh, assay. What I want to emphasize is the, uh, the time. The time you actually need to wait for the result come out. Mm -hmm. right. And also have all the people in the same place, actually that can be also I see. risky. Right, that's, that's another risk. So uh, in this case, if you if you think we, we can save like uh, two days just waiting for the for the for the result, and the two day what, what can you do? You can do a lot of things. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, this is quite an achievement, I would say. Congratulations, Thank Dr. You. Bai, Thank and you. also to the center. Yeah. Uh, we've been also doing our antiviral drug discovery research. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see actually if we can find uh, Dr. Tian actually at the TC Cotton Room. Oh. Yeah, uh, he's actually uh, been doing the, uh, the viral host uh, interaction study. Uh, I see. Aiming to actually find a host target uh, for developing antiviral uh, small molecule drugs. Can we go inside and uh, say hi to him? Absolutely. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah, let's get a lab code. Okay, thanks. We are in uh, urgent need of antiviral drugs for treating COVID-19. 
But even before COVID-19, humankind are in a dire need of more antiviral drugs for treating, you know, uh, HIV, hepatitis B, or some other virus you never, probably never heard of, like a dengue virus, yes. like a Zika virus. Ebola. So we hope to identify some broad spectrum antivirus that will work not only for COVID-19, but also for other viruses. Yes. Maybe for a virus uh, that will cause epidemic in the future even. So we study how virus enter into the human cells and how it replicate in human cells. Actually, that process is very complex. It needs help of a lot of your own genes or your own protein mm -hmm. to, to work for them. So many different viruses actually uh, utilize or you may hijack the similar human proteins for their own use. Okay. So if you can block those common use so-called so host factors, you might have some uh, idea how to make new drugs that not bl only block uh, one specific virus but many different other viruses. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. We look for those genes, human genes, that are used by vi the viruses to replicate them themselves. So kill the virus with one stone, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the, you started this research by studying fat cells. Yes. Sort of this uh, hypothetical origin of COVID-19. Yeah. yeah, we want to learn from the nature. In the nature, there are animals that are better than humans at dealing with viruses. Mm -hmm. Bat is a great example. They, they, they have uh, so many different viruses in themselves and uh, they actually transmit viruses into other uh, like human, like other uh, animals. And this time COVID-19 also, the big yeah, suspect it, is yeah, bad, right? The, the number one suspect uh, is, is bad. So mm. how much do we know now about the host and the intermediate host now, given your research? Based on genomic studies, it's uh, very, uh, it's almost uh, very, s very certain that bad is the uh, origin of this virus. But for the intermediate host, uh, there are many guesses uh, right now. Uh, we are not sure. So what have you discovered about the bat? We want to know how bat can harbor or tolerate so many viruses without, you know, uh, having a respir yes. respiratory mm -hmm. disease in, in them or even other symptoms in them. So they, they have figured some figured out some magic ways to 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 uh, get away with the diseases, but still having virus in their in their body. We have many clues. Uh, it has been studied by uh, our lab and other labs. Uh, it seems that they have a very uh, unique uh, so-called uh, innate immune system. Basically, how they deal with uh, many different viruses. Mm -hmm. um, this time, what we found is besides the, the antiviral system, their metabolism is also special. You know, how they synthesize their, their uh, nucleic acid or protein, the way they, they're building their own bodies mm -hmm. is, is a bit different from humans. One of the genes we find responsible for nucleic acid synthesis uh, is actually expressed at a much lower level than humans. Oh. And that actually maybe contribute to a lower infection level uh, by the viruses in bats. So how fast can we learn from the bat? We can use drugs to inhibit the human version of that gene, right? Mm -hmm. So that way we are mimicking the, the, the virus, how they're dealing with the, 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 maybe the, the bats. Mm -hmm. so, sorry. So basically you can use a small molecule drug to tone down right. the protein in your body. Mm -hmm. That has a much lower expression in bats. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this way you can actually suppress the viral replication mm -hmm. in, at least we show in human cells. Mm -hmm. So this is how we get some idea, we can get some mm -hmm. ideas to develop antiviral drugs by learning from nature, learning from other na animals, in this case learning from bats. Uh, it's fascinating, huh? Yeah, that's a good learning from that. I guess yeah. learning curve, this is what we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it took us six years to, to develop the tools to, to study bat cells because uh, most people in you know, a biomedical field, they, they don't study bats. So but we have this to is the interesting thing. I mean, you bet on bat mm -hmm. yeah. much earlier than most of the people mm -hmm. and the researchers. Yeah. How did that come into being? Since SARS. SARS, is, uh, as you know, you know, is the origin of SARS virus. Yeah. 
yeah, the old stars. I mean, so from them, people have uh, virologists have already paid attention to bats to study them. But the, it's our um, lab, lab who developed the first uh, tool, set, tool set that allow you to systematically check bat gene one at a time to answer the question, what's special about the bats that allow them to tolerate viruses? We check one gene at a time to fish out what are the key genes allowing them to deal with vi viruses. How many genes have we covered already? About 20,000 20, genes. 20, Today we have similar number of genes as humans, but uh, the genes uh, have uh, dif uh, slightly different sequences or mm -hmm. slightly uh, different expression levels. Yeah. But we still need to study. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the genes have human homologs, right. but they may function slightly differently, mm -hmm. or their activity levels are slightly uh, higher or lower. That's the the the, the, s the, s the special. Uh, property we want to learn. Fascinating. Is there a special gene that you like the most? Yeah, the gene I Your just mentioned. Gene? Yeah, it's, it has got a long name uh, called MTHFD1. Uh, it's the gene encode an enzyme that have three catalytic activities and they're responsible for making nucleic acid, making your, you know, the DNA, RNA, building the building blocks mm -hmm. of your, your, your cells. But we found that uh, you can slightly tone down this gene without hurting the cells so much. But you greatly you mean a small molecule drug. Yeah. I see. Then you can you can suppress the viral replication without hurting the cells. I like it. So what is the latest on this uh, small molecule drug? Yes. <laughs> so is this the boss checking the work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're anxious <laughs> to know the results. Okay. Yeah, so, so this drug was originally from, uh, you know, it's a natural product, originally isolated from bacteria. Mm -hmm. That's another thing we learn from, from nature, right? And uh, it's very difficult to, to mass produce. So we are now uh, team up with uh, organic chemistry, chemists to, to synthesize this drug in large quantity mm -hmm. so that we can use, test it in animal to model. To, um, uh, so for example, we, we have now we have an animal model of COVID-19 infection. Mm -hmm. If you can cure uh, COVID-19 in mice, uh, there or in not in the primates, or in yeah, in mm -hmm. monkeys, so mm -hmm. that, that that will help us to push this drug into clinical trials for uh, eventually using for human one day, hopefully. <laughs>